Hi, welcome to this edition of the Lightning Process podcast. I'm Dr. Phil. So far, we've talked about why the Lightning Process is effective at helping physical problems, the idea about neurology, that we can be activating pathways that aren't helpful for our health, whether it's physical or mental. We started to look at the idea of interrupting those pathways when we spot them and making choices. The next step then, once we've seen what's going on, that we're engaged in some pathways that aren't very useful for us and made a choice to step out of that, is to look at how do we redirect ourselves? How do we use different pathways? And to use different pathways, we need to apply the skills of coaching. Now, if you were working with me or another coach, then you'd see your coach and the coach would help you to identify things that aren't working in your life or your health, and then support you into find new solutions that work for you, tailoring it so it really fits with what you want. A real breakthrough that the Lightning Process has been working on for decades now is the idea of developing enough skills that you can be your own coach for you. Now, this is amazing because this means you're freed now from having to wait until your appointment with me or your coach. It means that in the middle of the night when your coach just isn't available, you don't have to wait until nine o'clock in the morning to ring. You can actually have the skills on tap so you can help yourself to work out how you steer your neurology. And this is incredible because this empowers you to suddenly be so proactive in making changes, positive changes in your life. Because and this is a kind of central thing in the lightning presence and all my work is the idea that you are the most informed about you and what you want in your future than anybody else. It doesn't mean you know everything, but you think about it, you know more about what you want in your life, what would help you, what would be the best thing for you than anybody else really could. So if we can tap into that, that sense of you as an inner coach, you as the wisest self, you need some skills, obviously, which the lightning process, one of the things you get trained in is what are the skills of coaching yourself? But if you could take on that role in the time when you most need it, that would be amazing because you're always there. So skilling yourself up is just incredible. A couple of things that are really valuable about taking this role of coach is the first thing, if you know anything about coaching, is coaches are inspiring, but they are really very much on your side. If you have a coach that you don't like or you don't connect with, they're not going to be any good no matter how good they're for somebody else. So if somebody you feel a bond with, somebody you feel gets you, someone who's kind, who sees the best in you. This is an interesting question because how often are the internal conversations, bear in mind we all, all talk to us a lot of the time, we talk to ourselves, how much of those internal conversations are really empowering and how much of them are pretty unpleasant, dragging us down, criticising us, not being very optimistic, or positive towards ourselves. Very famous uh, psychotherapist called Carl Rogers, who started the humanistic psychotherapy, said what we first need to do is we need to recognise that we are enough. We need to bring a kind of positive regard to ourselves and to our clients. So just pause for a minute and ask yourself, what am I? Am I kind enough to myself? We talked about this in one of the earlier episodes about the value and importance of self-kindness and the science and research into that. The coach really embodies that. When you take on this role of a coach, you step into really being nice to yourself. There couldn't be anything nicer than learning to be kind to yourself. It's a really valuable skill and one that there isn't enough of. It's central to so many philosophies, uh, spiritual practices, religious uh, perspectives and journeys, being nice to yourself, being kind to yourself, absolutely essential. So the coach embodies this ability to be kind. And one of my kind of takeaways from today is to ask yourself, are you kind enough to yourself? The next really interesting thing about coaching within the lightning process, it's not only it's self-coaching, but you take a step 
outside of yourself, as if you're talking to yourself. A bit like sometimes people talk to themselves in the mirror and it gives them a, bit of se a bigger sense that somebody else is there with them. In the lightning process, you learn how to step in front of yourself and turn around and look at yourself. Now you're no longer there, so you have to imagine yourself being there, but you have a conversation now. Why do we do that slightly strange thing? The purpose of this is to really step away from what's going on and to be able to inhabit that sense of being kind to yourself. Because so often we get tangled up in these not very helpful pieces of neurology. What we need to do is really step out to get away from it. Often people say things, don't they? Like, uh, I just needed to take a step back and see this differently. Or um, I needed to have a break and get some distance from this. This is, again, what the lighting process is doing. And there's some interesting research into this, this idea of distancing ourselves perceptually really makes a difference to how pr big problems seem. When you add to this the idea of physically stepping away, it's, it gives it a kind of strong quality. It's like, oh, it's easier to do because I can imagine myself over there. Just for a minute, just check this out. If you're in a house and you've got a window, hopefully most people are, if you imagine yourself outside of the window, in the garden, on the street, at a distance from yourself, ideally lower if you're like on the first story, but looking down, just having this perspective allows us to kind of see ourselves from this distance. And this distance allows us to feel less attached to what's going on, gives us this bit of clear space. Another piece of research is very interesting that supports this, is the idea, if we say to ourselves, I'm great, that's, that's nice, but it's even more powerful if you say, you're great. So you're talking to yourself, you're great. It seems that when we do this, it feels like somebody else is involved. And because we're very social animals through evolutionary history, the idea of being part of a group has been very important to our survival. The sense of somebody else saying something nice to us, supportive, it seems to have a bigger impact on our neurophysiology than if it's just us saying it to ourselves. So. One of the things we talk about in the lightning process, and this is a takeaway for anybody listening to this or watching this, is if you're starting to be nice to yourself, instead of saying, you, I'm great, say, you're great. Just that's, that little shift really seems to make a difference. When you combine that in the lightning process with stepping yourself into a different position, so like you're here, and then you step over here, and you talk to yourself, your imaginary self, because of course you're now here as a coach, talking to yourself from that distance and saying, you, Phil, or doing really well, or you feel I'm really I'm really proud of what you've done. Being kind to yourself really makes a difference, not just to how you feel, although it does feel very nice, it also makes a difference to your neurophysiology because when we are nice to ourselves, the research is clear, being nice to yourself, being nice to somebody else improves all sorts of measures of health, like blood pressure, heart rate, immune system function. It's quite amazing what it does. With the lightning process, there's an extra interesting twist to this, which is when we're nice to somebody, it's really good for them, but also it's really good for us. There's some benefits of kindness. When you're kind to other people, you get you get a little boost of oxytocin. You get the same benefits as if you're receiving it. So if you're taking this dual role of being the person being nice to yourself and being you receiving it, potentially you're going to get twice the amount of positivity. Just having that changed conversation. So there's a little bit about coaching, which is central to the lightning process. How do we move out of the neurology we don't want to be in? And also you'll hear people talking about with, with the lightning process, you move around. Why do you move around? Well, there's a really good reason for it. The more we can physically move around, the more we can separate from some of the pathways that aren't useful and give us a chance to step away from that neuroplastic railroad that we've been building unwittingly for a long time and shift. The body responds really well to usage. So when we use our neurology, when we use our muscles, when we use our sensory perception by changing position, it activates more neurology than if we're just thinking about it, staying still. Imagine like playing the piano. If you learn to play the piano by thinking about it, it'd probably be a lot more difficult than if you actually have a piano you can put your fingers on. In fact, the research suggests that's true. So physicality, bring some physicality into learning, whatever you're learning, driving, learning to drive in a car is easier than just thinking about it or reading it from a book. Using physical movement is really, really important in helping you 
to learn how to shift your neurology. So I hope you found that interesting, a little, little delve into some of the ideas around coaching and self-coaching. There's a book I've written called The Coach that's always there. Quick wave of it for those of you watching the video, uh, which you can get on Amazon. This tells you even more about this idea of coaching, the importance of coaching, the importance of self-coaching and what you can do with it. It's revolutionary. I used this uh, with a guy, Ed Stafford, the lovely Ed, first guy in the history of the world as far as we know to walk the entire length of the Amazon. You can find out the story of how he used these skills. So I hope you find it interesting. I'll see you guys on the next one.